Hello, and welcome to the Banker's Tech Talk video series, looking at all the developments in the world of fintechs. I'm Joy McKnight, Deputy and Technology Editor at The Banker, and I'm joined by Igor Forshanin, who's CEO of DataSign, which bridges the gap between machine learning, psychology, and finance. We're filming at the NTT Data Open Innovation Contest at Level 39 in London. Igor, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. So I understand that you use psychographic uh, sort of uh, data, uh, well, analysis. Can you tell me a little bit about how that works and how data design uses it? Yeah, absolutely. So what we do is uh, take uh, data that a financial institution might have on the client. Um, we call it decision-making data. So anything that's reflective of a choice that a person makes. And we use that to essentially um, profile an individual based on a well-established psychometric framework called Ocean or the Big Five. And what that allows us to do is to have five dimensions of a person. Um, their level of openness, extroversion, whether or not they're emotionally stable or how much they are. Um, and, and then from that, we can make inferences about the individual. So things like what colors they might like or what words they might be more, more appealing to them or even images that they might like more. Okay, uh, and what technology really underpins that? So we use a lot of machine learning, um, as a lot of I think companies uh, do these days, uh, to do these type of uh, this type of analysis. So in the first hand, we get a very large amount of data, uh, and then the idea is to process that data and to actually make the inference. And for that, we have um, we've collected a lot of our own research to figure out what different personalities like, how do they spend money, and then using new data. Um, or bank's data to actually then match the two. So the machine learning underpins a lot of what we do. Okay, uh, and what sort of pain points are re you really looking to solve for banks, or how can data sign be used within the banks? Absolutely, it's uh, it's a really it's becoming a very important point for banks as clients move away from branches, as we lose that human connection of actually talking to an individual and figuring out what their needs and desires are. Um, it's becoming harder to service the person to build that relationship, and that's really the pain point that we're focusing on: is how do we bring human interaction, human experience, uh, genuine understanding of a customer and their needs into the digital world, how, and using data to achieve that. Okay, uh, and you've worked with some incumbents. What would you say are sort of the challenges around doing that? But then also, how did you overcome those challenges? Uh, so working with uh, incumbent banks is is a long process. It's a, you have to be patient. Uh, usually, uh, our sales cycle can be anywhere from six to twelve months. Although we found uh, some banks are much more receptive. So a lot of the time, it's about finding the right partner and finding the right person within the organization that can really champion you through the organization and, and really believes in what you do and is willing to let's say. Um, use their work time and, and, and energy to help you. Um, so, so it's all about finding the right people in the organization. And then, of course, uh, the value proposition has to be there. So, it's, so what you're delivering has to be relevant to, to the bank uh, for it to work um, because it requires a lot of stakeholders. Um, there's a lot of meetings that, that take place. So I would say patience, finding the right person, um, and then delivering something that is valuable to the institution. Okay. And recently you raised a million in the seed uh, funding round. That's right. Sort of how difficult is finding funding in this environment? Uh, and then, you know, could you give any advice to other fintechs that are looking to raise money? Sure. Uh, so the round for us, uh, it took quite some time. Uh, in the end, we have investors uh, that are quite international. So we have a, a French uh, VC, a Russian VC, and a fund here in London. So we ended up with uh, all institutional money. And that was one of the things that we really focused on, is making sure that we have very credible partners going mm -hmm. forward, given that we work with financial institutions, and they like to see the backers being kind of important and, and stable. Um, in terms of raising, uh, it's not easy. It takes a lot of time. Uh, it was a six-month process, I would say, to, to go from beginning to, to close uh, and required maybe a hundred or more meetings um, to, to get through. Um, in terms of raising, I would always say, uh, for in terms of advice, um, try to set aside a lot of time. This will take time um, and do prep work. 
uh, I think that's one of the things we, we didn't really do the first time around that we're starting to do now is prepare for the round. It's, um, it's something that will take a lot of time, which means getting the materials ready, getting the financial model, um, getting your assumptions checked before you do that is really, really important. Uh, and to build that story, ultimately you are selling a story uh, at the seed level in particular, and having a credible, strong story to, to tell um, is, is really important. Excellent. Thank you so much, Igor. Thank you. Thank you.